What's up, y'all? Welcome to Convo Blueprint. I'm your host, Zion. And my friend messaged me. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's sort of a time difference. He's in Atlanta. And he messaged me about Kirk Franklin basically, you know, showing his true colors now. So I didn't know if y'all knew that uh, Kirk Franklin is now a trap rapper. And we're going to break it down uh, and, and look at his lyrics because lyrics are very powerful. And I find it interesting that uh, a lot of people who are in prominence, whether they are doing this by mistake or on purpose, they're really like being irresponsible with their words. Uh, it's interesting uh, from Creflo Dollar. A lot of people in the Christian atmosphere remember Creflo Dollar uh, basically admitting that he was lying about tithes for tithing for 20 years, but he didn't apologize for it, but he did apologize for it, but he wasn't apologizing for it because if he did, then he wouldn't be where he is now, meaning having all y'all's money and all these people's money, right? T.D. Jakes recently said that uh, he sort of blamed women for raising men to be women and sort of put the onus of all society's ills on that. But I feel like, you know, I can try to rationalize and make sense of what he was saying. Uh, but it is interesting that he gave his church to one of his daughters. So how does this coincide? And the fact that T.D. Jakes, you know, basically rose to prominence from his Woman Thou Art Loose conference. So with all this being said, like, why would he be somebody who is so lazy with his words and kind of careless with them to seemingly not talk about the social ills of society, um, not identify the audience who he's specifically talking to, and um, sort of, you know, put his audience under his feet, which is women, I felt like, you know, during the time. And uh, when your job is, not saying you're going to be perfect, but when your job is to speak to hundreds of thousands, possibly even millions of people, like, why would you not ensure that your words come out correctly or release a statement to further clarify what you mean? So Kirk Franklin is the latest person who said some crazy stuff in a rap. And then let's see what he said to then clean it up. Now, bear with me. I want to make sure that I got the audio right, you know, because that'd be terrible if it ain't. So I'm going to play it. Just got back from my sabbatical. I'm one of God's kids. Never thought I'd make it this far, but God did. Who shall I fear? Since the most high bought me. Since I've been 100, 50 tried to rob me. He can't cause God's got me. See, I'm God's property. Jesus is prodigy. Dopest ever, probably. Always in character. Church can make some characters. They categorically deny God's character. I don't mean to preach. Just trying to make you think. I was a dirty fish. Now me and God. And sing like Biggie J and Nas, the greatest kick of gold, the lion and the lamb, the bow down to the goat. That's the part right there. Did y'all hear it? The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. And we're going to break that thing down. So we'll, I'll go ahead and finish playing the rest of his rap. I don't want to make them Sticks with my kid. You heard the mix that my son put out. Kirk did. So if the cipher don't take away from my sins, it's the problem to take away from my ends. Tell my wife and my friends that we can't that end. I'm a fighter. Shout out to the Holy Spirit. I'm a ghost rider. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. So I noticed there was a, a bit of an echo. So let me try to fix that. Let me know if y'all if y'all heard it in the comments. If if not, I can play it again. I'm gonna go ahead and play it again, 
just for everybody and then we'll get back into it. I don't know if it did or not. Sometimes the audio be tripping. So, um, you know, at first, listen, I mean, what, what do y'all think? Do you have any problem with what Kirk Franklin said? The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Uh, it seems he issued a statement um, about this. And, uh, you know, he had to clarify some things because it's also interesting that one of Kurt Franklin's biggest songs was Now Behold the Lamb. And I'm just wondering, how can you be so irresponsible with your speech when, like, you are totally clear on the scripture and what it says and, you know, how the scripture identifies a goat? You know, that, that's the hard part for me. I just don't understand that. What do y'all think? Do you think it's problematic? Uh, do you see a trend in the way that people, you know, creatively, do you think this is blasphemy? Um, I kind of think so. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think so for a person. Uh, I've heard Kirk Franklin preach before. And, and what do you think? Should we extend grace uh, to these should we extend grace to these people in, in the way that, you know, like, do they get grace in the sense of they're human and they're not going to be perfect, but how do you give somebody grace when there's no other way you could kind of cut this? So let's look at uh, a sister's video here. Miss Titus too, okay. So, evidently, Kirk Franklin, uh, you know, made a video or actually an Instagram post to clarify his lyrics. So let's look at that. Kirk Franklin has explained exactly what he meant by the line. The line. Uh oh! Now the Wi-Fi is tripping. Kirk Franklin has explained exactly what he meant by the Maybe he doesn't like that. We're trying to uncover blasphemy here. <laughs> Kirk Franklin has explained exactly what he meant by the The lion the lion about now. About now. Well, while that's trying to pop up, um, what what do you think? What do you think about this? Uh, if you if you're watching, let me know where you're watching from, and what do you think this means, like, for a spiritual person? I mean, this is Kirk Franklin, y'all, and and does this play? Does this have a bearing on anything? Like, I mean, he also says, uh, like Biggie J and Nas. Uh, something to the effect of like them being like the greatest or something. And for a believer, like, do y'all think that's that's okay? Um, Biggie said he didn't want to go to, he said he wanted to go to hell. Um, Jay-Z said uh, Christ can't save, Jesus can't save you, life starts when the church ends. 
um, Nas depicted himself as Christ on a cross in his video in that song, You Can Hate Me Now. Like, do you think that, you know, these people have a place in the in the mind of a believer being like the greatest? Um, it does this signify where Kurt Franklin's relationship with the world is? Are you following where I'm going? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm gonna try to play this again. Kirk Franklin has explained exactly what he did. The line, the line. As Christ on a cross is I guess this really is just not going to work right now. So we're going to keep it moving. And uh, we'll just go ahead and look at uh, some scripture that talks about, you know, if we remember what Kirk Franklin initially set out to do, he set out to um, merge the sacred and the, and the secular. Um, remember, you, you think that we've taken gospel music too far. Let's look at, uh, we'll read two different versions, but Ezekiel 22, 26, and 28. It says, your priest, I'll make it bigger so y'all can see. Here we go. Your priest uh, violated my law and de desecrated my holy things. They can't tell the difference between the sacred and secular. They tell people there's no difference between right and wrong. They're contemptuous of my holy Sabbaths, profaning me by trying to pull me down to their level. Your politicians are like wolves prowling and killing and re ooh, I never heard of that word. Rapaciously taking whatever they want. Rapaciously. So they raping everybody, taking whatever they want. Your preachers cover up for the politicians by pretending to have received visions of special revelations. They say this is what God, the master says, when God hasn't said so, said so much as one word. Extortion is rife. Robbery is epidemic. The poor and needy are abused. Outsiders are kicked around at will with no access to justice. Hmm. Let's let's go down and let's look at it. See if they got ESV up here. Here we go. Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction. Uh, first of all, when it says her priests, you know this is talking about the church. This is talking about you know we can we can frame it as a reference for church, modern day church, but this is also talking about the priests of the tribes, right? <clears throat> They have made no distinction between the holy and the common. Neither have they taught the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have disregarded my Sabbaths so that I am profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey, shedding blood, destroying lives to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have smeared whitewash for them, seeing false visions and divining lies for them saying, thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken. So I read this just to highlight that there is a difference between the sacred and the secular. And there should be, a, there is a separation. And if you look at what was happening in Ezekiel chapter 2, 22, what we just read, what was happening is basically they were forsaking the culture that the Most High gave them and living in their own way and telling false lies and blaspheming ultimately and trampling on the sabbath so the lion and the, the lamb and the lion right the lamb with the lion is a phrase a paraphrase from isaiah and more closely quoted as the lion and the lamb a child will lead them and the like are an artistic and symbolic device most generally related to peace the symbol is used in both Christianity and Judaism to represent the Messianic age. In addition, in Christianity, according to a sermon by Augustine, the lion stands for Christ resurrected, the lamb for Christ's sacrifice. He endured, he endured death as a lamb. He devoured it as a lion. Augustine, Sermon 375a. Isaiah 35.9 casts a lion 
as metaphorically forbidden in the future paradise. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Yet Isaiah 62 and 25 and Isaiah 11 and 67 respectively reference such formerly ravenous beasts as becoming peaceable. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. In like a lion, out like a lamb is a proverb having to do with March weather. It has been speculated that its origin is from astrological Leo or lion being followed by airy ram. Interesting, right? Okay, so that's just some Wikipedia background. How do we understand this passage, lion and the lamb, since, you know, Kirk Franklin wanted to use it? He said it about down to the goat. If you know anything about scripture, you know who the goat is. Goat is not greatest of all time. The goat, uh, the, the scripture talks about how there's a separation. The, the, the goats will be sorted to the left, right? And the sheep will be sorted to the right. The right hand of fellowship with the most high. So you don't want to be no goat. And goat does not represent greatest of all time. That's an acronym. But in a spiritual essence, a goat is not of the most high. Typically, when someone is thinking of lion and the lamb, Isaiah 11 and 6 is in mind due to it often being misquoted. And the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the young goat and the calf and the young lion and the fat link together. The true lion and the lamb passage is Revelation 5, verse 5 through 6. Oh, oh, oh that's a hyperlink. Here we go. And... One of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing, which is Yahushua, who stands worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. The lion and the lamb both refer to Yahushua or the one they call Jesus Christ. He is both the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah and the lamb of who was slain. The lion and the lamb are descriptions of two aspects of the nature of Christ. As the lion of Judah, he fulfills the prophecy of Genesis 49, 9 and is the Messiah, though Judaizers don't believe he is, but he is the Messiah who would come from the tribe of Judah. As the lamb of God, he is the perfect and ultimate sacrifice for sin. The scene of Revelation chapters four and five is the heavenly throne room after receiving the command to write to the seven churches in Asia Minor, John is caught up in the spirit to the throne room in heaven where he is to receive a series of visions that culminate in the ultimate victory of Yahushua at the end of the age. Revelation 4 shows us the endless praise that God receives from the angels and the 24 elders. Chapter 5 begins with John noticing that there is a scroll in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. The scroll has writing on the inside and is sealed with the seven seals. Which once again, Yahushua is worthy to open them. Um, you know, if you haven't read the book of Revelation, it's probably about time that you should. And uh, the first chapter, I mean, it starts out just wonderfully. Let's go to it real quick. The first chapter of the first verse, it's not playing no game. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw right here. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it for the time is near. So. Just from reading it and and hearing it, if you hear it when it when the scripture talks about hearing, it's tied to action. It's tied to doing, right? If you hear it, keep it and do it. If you read it aloud, hear it, keep it, which means obey it or do it, you get a blessing. 
After giving us a description of the scroll, an angel proclaims with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? John begins to despair when no one comes forth to answer the angel's challenge. One of the 24 elders encourages John to weep no more and points out that the lion of the tribe of Judah has come to take and open the scroll. The lion for the tribe of Judah is obviously a reference to Yahusha. The image of the lion is meant to convey kingship. Yahusha is worthy to receive and open the scroll because he is the king of the Most High's people. Back in Genesis 49, 9, when Jacob was blessing his sons, Judah is referred to as lion's cub. And in verse 10, we learn that the scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter is a symbol of lordship and power. This was a prophecy that in Israel, the kingly line would be descended from Judah. That prophecy was fulfilled when David succeeded to the throne after the death of King Saul, 2 Samuel. David was descended from the line of Judah and his descendants were the kings of Israel and Judah until the time of the Babylonian captivity in 586 BC. The imagery or this imagery of the kingship is further enhanced when Yahushua is described as the root of David. This hearkens us back to the words of Isaiah the prophet. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. In that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for, for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. As the root of David, Yahushua is not only being identified as a descendant of David, but also as the source or root of David's kingly power. Why is Yahushua worthy to open the scroll? He is worthy because he has conquered. Amen. We know that when Yahushua returns, he will conquer all of the Most High's enemies, as graphically described in Revelation chapter 19. However, more importantly, Yahushua is worthy because he has conquered sin and death at the cross. The cross was the ultimate victory of the Most High over the forces of sin and evil. The event that occurs at the return of Yahushua are the mop-up job to finish what was started at the cross. I like that, the mop-up job. Because Yahushua secured the ultimate victory at Calvary, he is worthy to receive and open the scroll, which contains the righteous judgment of the Most High. Yahushua's victory at the cross symbolized by his appearance as a lamb standing as though it had been slain. Revelation 5 and 6, and between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though if it had been slain with seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of the Most High sent out into all the earth. Prior to the exodus from Egypt, the Israelites were commanded by the Most High to take an unblemished lamb, slay it, and smear its blood on the doorposts in their homes. Y'all remember that? So that the firstborn or the death angel wouldn't come there. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel on the 10th day of this month, every man shall take a lamp according to their father's houses, a lamp for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamp, then he and his neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it over the doorposts and the lintel of the houses which they eat it. All right. The blood of the slain lamb would set apart the people from Israel from the people of Egypt when the death angel came during the night to slay the firstborn of the land. The Most High will always protect his people and always give them a way of escape from the trials and tribulations. And guess what? If it's not a way of escaping in this life, it's the next. Those who have the blood of the lamb would be spared. Fast forward to the days of John the Baptist. When he sees Yahushua approaching him, he declares to all present, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Yahushua is the ultimate Passover lamb who saves his people from eternal death. So when Yahushua is referred to as the lion and the lamb, we are to see him as not only the conquering king who will slay the enemies of you, of the Most High at his return, 
but also as a sacrificial lamb who took away the reproach from sin from his people so they may share in his ultimate victory. So how is what Kirk Franklin said not blasphemy at this point? And the, the funny thing is, one of Kirk Franklin's biggest songs is Now Behold the Lamb. Every year, right? And so, you know, every this this come back like the Mariah Carey song. This was one of his biggest songs. Now behold the lamb, the precious lamb of God, right? So the yeah, like I remember singing that song in church. So it's very interesting to me. Like okay, and I don't know what's going on with the audio, but I, I want to try to do this again. Let's see if this will play. Whew. I'm going to try to do something to change my audio source. Maybe if I do this real quick, it will work. Okay, I think I got it working. Let's see if this works now, y'all. One more thing. <laughs> Audio. Okay, so I got my microphone. Okay, try it again. Okay, so that's not working. This is not working with me, y'all. Okay, so that's not working. Mm. I will try again. First, you don't succeed. Try again. Okay. Kirk Franklin has explained exactly what he meant by the, the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. So I use lion and lamb metaphorically to say that everyone who thinks they're the best will someday have to bow down to the best, meaning Jesus, who is the ultimate greatest of all time. It's hyperbole, not theology. This is hyperbole and theology. He's touching on depravity, justification, and the glorification of God. I don't mean to preach, just trying to make you think I was a dirty dish, not me and God to sing. Like Biggie, J, and Nas, the great. like Biggie, Jay, and Nas, the greatest capable. So he says, I don't mean to preach, just trying to make you think. I was a dirty dish, now me and God in sync. Like Biggie, Jay, and Nas, the greatest capable. Capable of what? The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. This is some symbology that just should not be from a believer of the most high maybe it's acceptable to come from a christian i don't know but it ain't acceptable for a follower and a believer of the most high let alone one of so-called gospel music's biggest stars and i wonder how many people are going to like try to back this up and you know including himself so he knew he messed up but he wrote he had to have write this you know wrote this right yeah he had to have wrote this song and, and why would he just not make some other lyrics? I don't understand. Do you think this is exposing 
who he really is and how he really believes as a person. Great is capable. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Kirk is now saying Jesus is the goat, not as in Baphomet goat, as in greatest of all times goat. So when we read the lion and the lamb, we wrongly assumed that Kirk was talking about Jesus. I kind of put this in the, in the, uh, y'all remember the movie Noah and the movie Noah wasn't like, um, it didn't follow the scripture, the one with Russell Crowe. And it's almost like, you know, everyone was up in arms over that movie because it didn't follow the scripture. Because, I mean, if you make a movie about the Bible and you use the term Noah, there's going to be some expectations that come with it. I feel the same way about Kurt Franklin. Like, there's expectations that come with a gospel artist, a Christian artist, a man who's not only an artist, but I've heard him preach before. And so how can he make such a huge mistake and honor it's like even even okay so if we look at lyrics as a sermon if we look at the the order he said i don't mean to preach just trying to make you think i was dirty dish now me and got to sink like like biggie j and nas the greatest capable so like even the honor that he gives to man before I, I could be making too much of this maybe i'm doing that but it just doesn't make sense to me at all let me know what y'all think in the comments but really kirk was talking about biggie j and nas therefore it's not really blasphemy it's like i want to give kirk the benefit of the doubt but jesus has always been the lion and the lamb to christians so to attribute the title lion and the lamb to rappers like biggie j and nas for me it's still giving blasphemy. Kirk Frank. I agree. For me, it's still giving blasphemy. And, and and I just, you know, especially after looking at all of this, you know, I, I don't know how we can chop that any other way. What do y'all think? Let me know what you think in the comments. And... I want to tie this into something that happened. Um, at least this video was posted in, in 2019. Because I feel like warning always comes, right? The scriptures say warning comes before destruction, right? Now, let me make sure, please, Lord, let the sound work. Okay, so this video was uploaded in 2019, uh, a video update from the street preacher who was outside of the Florida theater preaching. Kurt Franklin approached our team and we had an exchange of words. Many people are asking if we met after the show. Be praying for Kirk and those who heard will hear the truth of God's word. Share if you feel led. Now, what's interesting about this is that this response was also from Kirk Franklin going on BET. Ain't that something? So let's let's dive into this and and see, you know, where where was Kirk Franklin at at this time? Let's dive in. Hey everyone, my name is Ty a lot of you may recognize me from a video that surfaced early this week uh, where I was the street preacher who was rebuking Kirk Franklin. We had an exchange of words on the curb here in Jacksonville, Florida. Since then, we've received a ton of questions, comments. A lot of you guys agree with us. Some of you guys agree with us. However, you disagree with the way that we went about it. Um, and some of you guys disagree completely, which is all to be expected. I wanted to make make this video to share with you why I rebuked Kirk Franklin as harshly as I did and why I believe it was not wrong. I also wanted to answer a lot of the questions and objections that came up in the comments on both Kirk's Instagram post as well as on our channel. So the most obvious question that kept coming up was, did you actually end up meeting with Kirk Franklin? 
the answer to that question is yes. The footage you're seeing right now is the footage of Kirk and myself and our team sitting down and having a conversation about this. He also included his spiritual father, Tony Evans, on the phone and we began to talk. So I don't want to share a lot of this clip with you because I don't have Kirk's permission, but here is a clip of me. Is it me or did Kirk Franklin look very upset? Like he was pointing at everything. He was, he looked very upset to me. Saying what I felt led to say to Kirk and Tony that night. What is actually in this book? What is actually in this Bible? And the Bible says in the book of Jude that these, these pastors and Tony, I, I don't know your complete ministry. I'm not sitting here condemning you. I don't, I don't study up your ministry and I'm not. What do y'all think about, you know, the fact that Kirk Franklin, you know, I'm, I'm just, I haven't watched this full video, so we're reacting to it together. What do y'all think about the fact that Kirk Franklin brought his pastor on? Because to me, at first glance, it, it, or, or his sponsor, you know, that's a word that me and my, my brother, Shantae, use. The fact that, like, Kirk Franklin's not theologically sound enough to speak for himself. I think that's the problem with uh, many people um, who who follow, uh, who have a religion but not a relationship. And when I say relationship, I mean a practice. You know, I don't believe in this idea of a covering. Um, not into the, maybe because I've never had one. I'm not saying I haven't had people pray for me, but I don't have a sponsor. I don't have a mentor. I have a brother. You know, I have prophets surrounding me. Um, and we sharpen one another, uh, but, but needing to call someone to back up my faith or where I'm at with the most high, I feel like that's kind of like a lazy thing to be called out by a street preacher. It must've had enough impact for Kurt Franklin to sit down and actually meet with him. And for Kurt Franklin, now we didn't even get I'm a minute and 36 seconds into it, but it just makes me feel that like, that's the problem with re religiosity. That's the problem with people. Their faith is so shallow that they got to call for backup, you know, but what about it when it's you at midnight, you know, and you got to cast some demons out or get some evil spirits away from you or somebody's in need of prayer or in need of help. Are you going to say, Oh, we need to call the pastor. Or are you going to pray? You know what I'm saying? Because first Peter, uh, I think I think it's two and nine says that we are part of the royal priesthood. Every believer is a priest. Now, the Christian church might not teach you that the Catholic church might not teach you that. But the scripture teaches you that that every believer is a priest. Who are you tithing to? Like. If there's if the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that rise that, that um, caused you who should have raised from the dead is living within you. Why you need backup? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, where two or three are gathered, like if they both, if these three people right here have the Holy Spirit, then even if they disagree, there will be common ground. The disciples didn't agree, uh, didn't agree on everything. But if we have the Holy Spirit, there's somewhere we're going to meet in the middle. And, and even if it means we agree to disagree, but I'm talking too much. I'm going to go ahead and play this. <laughs> I'm not sitting there looking to destroy people. That's not, that's not my heart. I don't know what is going on with my Wi-Fi, Lord. Let's see. Okay, it should be uploading now. What my heart breaks for is the fact that the Bible says that the wrath of God is on the whole multitude. The Bible says that when Jesus comes back, the blood of the sinners is up to the horse's bridle. But in the churches, we're telling people that it's okay. Every person that I meet nowadays tells me that God loves me and we're all sinners. That's the worst doctrine in America right now. Because the, the, the real doctrine of Jesus Christ is that 1 John 3, 9 says, he was born of God, does not sin, for God's seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. So the problem that we have right now is that we've got a whole bunch of people thinking that they love God, thinking they know God, and Paul said the Antichrist doesn't set up his kingdom until there's a great falling away of the church. 
Exactly. Which leads me to believe that the church is going to be the one who ushers in the mark of the beast. It's going to be the great falling away. It's going to be the exchange of truth of lot for lies. Like this brother saying right here, everything he's saying is, is backed up with, with scripture. And, you know, it's amazing to me that people who feel they need to defend the word of like, look, religion, your church, your faith should govern the way that you live. Yahushua should be your Lord. Now, religion takes the focus off of self and puts it on the community or the world. But I, you know, am very interested in politics and at one point was very politically driven, like a lot of Americans. But what I realized is, where is the redemption in politics? Yahushua, when he was walking the earth, was not trying to overthrow the Roman government. So what am I doing? I can care about justice and not be wrapped up in who the president is, when the president is going to be elected or the next elected official. A political party doesn't need to align with my faith. You get what I'm saying? A theocracy was never the desire for the most high for the most high and his people. The desire for the most high and his people was that his law, his commandments, his statutes was what governed them. Not a king. Why you want a king when you got the king of kings? And I think that this thing is blinding a lot of eyes of the believers. And we came out to, to warn believers because the reality is like Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And the reality is in these last days, there are a lot of people. Jesus said, the first thing he did in Matthew 24 is he said, be careful that no one deceives you. Before he even started talking about wars and rumors of wars and anything, he said, be careful that no one deceives you. Yeah. My point is that, you know, either the Bible's true or it's not, man. And the reality is, like, I, I, don't, I don't believe, Kirk, I'll be honest, man. I'm just being honest with you. I don't believe that God would have you stand in the presence of the wicked. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 1, blessed is he who doesn't stand in the way of the sinners. Nor sit in the seat of, of, of the scorners. I don't think the Lord would have you sit at BET unless it was for a time and such a time as this for you to raise up a standard and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is coming. We are in the last days. I think God would want you to raise up a standard and say it and probably you'd probably give your head for it. Unfortunately, after we spoke, we did not end up agreeing. Both Tony and Kirk said that I was way out of line and that I don't understand what it's like to become all things to all men. They used this scripture. I don't see what the issue was with anything this brother said. And it's interesting that this was approximately three years ago. But look what Kurt Franklin just said on the BET Awards. You see what I'm saying? Like this was a moment. I believe this was a moment for atonement. This was a moment three years ago for Kurt Franklin to do some soul searching. This is the moment for us to do some soul searching so that we, if we find ourselves on a path that is not righteous, we can check back in and change our direction. Kurt Franklin could have repented at that moment, but now he's saying the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Now he's giving praise and like from Kurt Franklin's position, he's a, he's a, he's potentially a bigger star than Biggie and Jay and Nas or just as big just as internationally known and if we and, and maybe that's even like something that shouldn't be measured because the the fact of the matter is he's a gospel artist which means he should be after the most high should be right like he talks about christ in his songs But he's giving praise and adoration and sending people to listen to Little Baby. And because remember, he had the other time he was on the BET Awards, he had a song with Little Baby. And he's pushing people towards Kanye and pushing people towards the world, it seems like, not Yahusha. He mentioned, you see what I'm saying? Like in a time where it's very uh, popular to mention Christ or, or Jesus, like everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is not going to be saved. On that day, he said, the scripture says, he'll say, 
Um, depart from me, you worker, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. And they're going to say, oh, we did all these things in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me, thou worker of iniquity, I never knew you. True to explain the BET Awards was an opportunity for Kirk Franklin to build bridges and create opportunities. And I'm not trying to play pick on Kirk Franklin, but if we're going to have the conversation, let's have the conversation. Even the way that like he dances and the gyrating of the hips, you know what I'm saying? Like, is do you think that that's a bit much? I mean, like, and what what gets me is like he's a married man, right? He's a father. Like, at what point, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say that I'm perfect. You know what I mean? I like the way I, I, I said, I, I used all the, the enunciations right there. Perfect, right? Um, I'm not perfect, but we all should be able to examine ourselves, right? We all should be able to, and, and I want you to know that as we're looking at Kirk Franklin, I'm examining myself and, um, and we should always look inward first. When we see someone doing something, we should look inward first. And um, I just don't think to be on stage singing praises to the Most High and doing those things with your body and gyrating your hips all over the place is a good look. Now to the natural ear, this actually sounds pretty good. It sounds like, hey, why wouldn't you want to create new opportunities for people to meet Jesus, right? Uh, isn't that what Kirk Franklin's job should be as a gospel artist? Um, actually, the adverse of that is true if you actually read the Bible. And this is what, why we were out there. We weren't necessarily out there for Kirk Franklin so we could meet him, so I could have that conversation. Um, we go and preach many different places. We've had a lot of comments come up. Some, of people, some people have said this is a race issue. I, I'm sure if you were to search our past videos, we've gone to Rockville here in Jacksonville. We've gone to uh, Deep Purple concerts. We've gone to many different places. We, we've been to many different types of people and we will keep going. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the utmost parts of the earth. Every tribe and every tongue will be in heaven one day but not everyone from those tribes and tongues. That's why there is such an urgency for the gospel right now. And that's the reason why we were out there that night. It was for the people. There are people in America being deceived at mass and they're doing it under the name of Jesus. So I don't know the heart of Kirk Franklin. So I can say to you today that Kirk Franklin is a deceiver or Kirk Franklin is being deceived. I'm not sure. I don't know. That is the reason why. See, and this is how you handle things, just like that. For there is no condemnation for any man who is in Christ Jesus, right? So I'm not even uh, condemning Kurt Franklin. None of us should. None of us should. However, we can look and we are to, to judge. We are to judge, but we're not to condemn because man looks at the outward. Like we're looking at the actions. We're looking at what he said. But we don't know what's in his heart and we can't we can't judge what's in his heart. And however, that that's a conundrum, right? That's a fine line because, you know, the scripture says, and you will know them by their fruit. If someone is a habitual line stepper. You know what I mean? Like at a certain point, it's like, man, your heart is black or you need a heart change. Check your heart. What's that Christian comedian? Check your heart, right? I rebuked him. The Bible teaches us that open rebuke is better than secret love. And after many comments, I can see that many of you out there actually know your Bibles. I'm so thankful in my heart that many people in the comments were able to say, hey, this guy had love in his heart and he was angry for the right reasons. So the next question I was asked, which was actually quite surprising, was why did you watch the BET Awards if it's so bad? Um, and so sinful. I'll tell you this, I did not watch the BET Awards. The only reason I was able to see this video is because, and I'll show you here on the screen, on this Facebook event that was posted by the Florida Theater here in Jacksonville, they had posted this post on their page. Our group clicked on that link and we were horrified to see that Kurt Franklin did not represent Jesus Christ the way the Bible tells us to. 
there is a lot of blood on Kirk Franklin's hands. And yes, I still stand by that statement. Many of you were shocked at the fact that I would say something like this. But if you were to read the book of Ezekiel, if you were to read certain books of the Bible, you will see that when we do not warn people of the judgment that is coming, that we ourselves place those people's blood on our hands. The Bible says that we are supposed to be warning people. The Bible says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Another question was about, of course, the shaking of the hands or the lack thereof. Um, you know, in 2 John, it says very clearly that whoever wishes these people who preach a different gospel, Godspeed, uh, they actually partake with them in their evil deeds. Now, I know for a fact that after the Bible says, have nothing to do, do not touch. After Kirk doing this, that he's kind of marked himself in many ways and that's how we mark ourselves is that we touch the world the bible says when we're friends with the world we become enemies of god and our goal is to become pure and spotless in god's eyes the bible says that we should be and i see like all of the tricks to become friends with the world like you know when i was attending a church building right first of all scripture says that the most high doesn't dwell in temples built with man man's hands he dwells in us, right? So you, so this idea of going to the house of the Lord, no, you, you should be the house of the Lord. Um, But I see all of the ways that Satan has tried to introduce the world to the church. And one of those biggest ways right now is politics. Maybe I'll do a show about, you know, the Brazilian election and all that going on over there. But it's the evangelical, you know, um, whole focus is is politics and you know much of the Catholic Church and Christian Church is about politics and being wrapped up in the things that society is doing but when we read in the scripture the most high's people were about the most high's business Yahushua was not trying to overthrow the Roman government he was rescuing people from their sins healing them of their diseases that's what he was doing what were the prophets doing? The prophets were bringing correction. They were turning people into believers by, you know, committing miracles in the name of the Most High and um, and bringing warning and telling people what was to come if they didn't turn back and or the angel of the Lord visiting people to let them know the blessings that they were going to receive. So I just think that there's the church, spiritual institutions today are preoccupied with so much that is not biblical it's not even funny anymore unreprovable in first colossians and i'm not standing here saying that i'm a hundred percent where exactly the lord is going to have me on that day but i'm telling you that i press forward every single day to be unreprovable in his sight and i believe that there are days that i can look and say i am in god's presence the whole day and that's what we are supposed to be striving for as christians because Jesus said, strive to make it through the door. For I tell you, many will try, but not be able to enter. A lot of times in churches, we see pastors saying, just relax, don't strive, don't do anything. Now the Bible says, let each man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. When last did you feel? When I think about this verse right here, I think that like everyone wants, not everyone, but a lot of people in church wanted the easy way. They, um, a lot of people who are Christians or whatever, they think that if this nation would just stop abortion, if this nation would stop gay marriage, if this nation would just, you know, stop these certain things, these certain things that they, uh, they deem as sins, that the Most High would heal the land, you know, but that ain't, that's not what scripture shows us. That is not what scripture shows us that that is going to be happening in the last day. It says it's going to be a great falling away. It doesn't talk about there being a revival. It talks about there being a great falling away. And so why is the church building not focused on what the scripture actually says and who we're actually supposed to be? And rather than trying to paint with a broad brush and say, oh, if you're a Democrat, you can't be a Christian. Or if you're a Republican, then you're aligned with Christian values. Or you see there's like these broad strokes. But when I think about working out 
my own salvation with fear and trembling. It means that that I have to be in constant communication with the Most High, that I need to be aware of what the Most High is telling me to do, and that I personally don't believe in a three-way relationship with the Most High. It's not me, my pastor, and the Most High. It's me and the Most High. This is how I believe. This is how I pr practice my faith. Because we have the spirit of the Most High dwelling inside us by way of the Ruach HaKodesh or Holy Spirit. So any, what do you need outside of that? I'm not saying that the Most High can't speak to me through anyone, whether that be a pastor, um, a homeless person on the street, or a co-worker, or a friend, or anyone, because he can. But it's my duty and responsibility to, to cultivate that relationship with the Most High. The same way Moses did, the same way John did, the same way the prophets did, right? They had to cultivate that relationship and learn how to stand on the word of the Most High for themselves. So why do people today think that there's an easy way uh, to, to reach that place of your purpose? It's not an easy way. It's going to be you and the Most High and your faith and standing on what he has promised you and standing on what he has told you and obeying it. That's the easy way. Fear and tremble for your salvation. When did you, last did you fear the Lord? The Lord is to be feared. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I hope that you'd be a wise servant before Jesus comes back. Now, I'm not a hater of Kirk Franklin at all. I actually loved his music back in the day, but as I began reading my Bible and starting to understand that the Bible says, what fellowship does light have in common with darkness? I started to realize the fake for what it was. I started to realize many other artists, not just Kirk, but many other artists in the gospel, Christian rap, and Christian music industry. I myself had to get rid of many of my own albums to this day of which I'm still trying to chase down the ability for them to get taken off of certain stores all over the world because I too was singing songs just like Kirk Franklin. I was a pastor of a church. People loved me. I was loved by everybody and I sang songs. I made albums. People bought those albums. I was traveling Florida. I was starting to become very well known in, in, in the local industry here in Florida and I was up and coming. I was getting invited to different destinations, different places to, to speak and to minister musically. And one day I met the Lord in my living room and he said to me that I had a lot of blood on my hands. I too had to be woken up from my sleep and I hope that Kirk Franklin will wake up from his. The only reason I'm angry, and this is why people ask me the question, do you hate Kirk Franklin? I uh, know I don't hate Kirk Franklin. The Bible says that open rebuke is better than secret love. If I hated Kirk Franklin, I would not even come give him a message. I wouldn't have even entertained him or even rebuked him. Jesus said, of the ones I love, I rebuke and chase. You know, it's, it's important that we know that when there is love, brothers that love one another are okay with just saying, hey, you need It's amazing that like, you know, the, the, the way this brother's talking, he, this is not a message that you hear preached in your church, but in many churches. And if you do, then you, I would say you have a great church. And when I say church, I'm talking about going to visit a building, um, those who attend a church building, because this is not the popular, this is not generally what they preach. They preach things that really keep you attached to the world and financial prosperity and things that are outwardly, but very rarely do they preach to the things that, you know, speak to the inner man. And what he's doing is he's speaking to the inner man. And when you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and when you have a relationship with the Most High, he's going to tell you how you should live your life. You, you could see all these things. He was a pastor. He was a singer. He was making albums. He was being invited to places. You could say, oh, my gosh, he's doing great things for the kingdom of the Most High. But guess what? You don't get to decide to offer the Most High what you want to offer him. He's a jealous God. You offer him what he requires of you.
you need to get this right. This is wrong in your life. And I was not angry at Kirk. What I'm really angry with is how the BET Awards continues to push out the filth that they do over and over again every single day, day in and day out. And you can hear me getting a little bit passionate about this right now. And the reason why is because I'm really angry at the fact that different communities are controlled by different kinds of entertainment. The white community is controlled by the Taylor Swifts of this world. And, and the African-American community is controlled by the gospel artists that are fellowshipping with artists like Kanye West. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. This it came with a few toys like a happy meal. Which Kirk Frank. The amazing part of Kanye West saying that he sold his soul to the devil and then coming to Christianity, you know, um, I broke this down with my friend a couple of times, uh, like that song that he has. Uh, I might as well pull up the lyrics and, and can't tell me nothing. Kanye says. Remember, he said, I had a dream I could buy my way to heaven. I woke up. I spent it on a necklace. I told God I'd be back in a second. Man, it's so hard not to act reckless. How's that not blasphemy right there, right? Then this is uh, another part. He says, let up the suicide doors. This is my life, homie. You decide yours. I know that Jesus died for us, but I couldn't tell you who decide wars. So I parallel double park that sideways. What is Kanye saying right here? He's saying he's stuck in the world of choosing what side he wants to be on. He's like, I know he, he's aware that Christ died for us, but he don't know who's going to win the war. So he's going to try to play the line. And so it makes it's interesting that Kanye could do that say all these things, then go to the church, then say he sold his soul to the devil, then come back to the church and say he's a gospel artist and make this gospel music, but never have to answer for the fact that he says that he sold his soul. If you've heard Kanye deal with that, I would love to hear it. Please send it to me um, and, and I'll talk about it. But I never heard Kanye address the fact that he said that he sold his soul even after coming out you know, because you would think that he would, there would be some repentance. You would think that, you know, I gave my life to Christ. You know, I, I previously said that I sold my soul, but I just want to let y'all know, because how many other artists talked about selling their soul? Everybody from Snoop Dogg, Kanye, who we're talking about now, DMX, uh, you know, rest in peace, DMX. Like all these people talked about selling their soul to the devil. So if Kanye deal with that, and he truly did make a transformation, then how great or how important would it be for him to actually address that? And the fact that church leaders didn't make him address that. And the fact that he went straight into Joel Osteen's church. Is that not interesting, y'all? Franklin is actually guilty of doing. Kanye West, wonderful artist. Yeah. Pro probably to me, one of the most talented people in the business. And he's a friend. And he's a friend. And he's a friend of mine. He's a good friend of mine. Because he made that Jesus walks. And, and I'm mad at that. I'm mad at Jesus for not giving me that joy. Yeah, I, know you, I, know, I know you wanted that song. I'm mad at Jesus for not giving me that joy. Like, I was like, Jesus, I've been walking with you. you <laughs> Your boy been walking with you for a minute. You could have let me out that, that record, son. Is. Come on, son. Come on, Jesus. could have gave me that record. That walk, that song. <laughs> That song was a change was in point illest, in the game. It was the illest, yo. I'm now, telling you, I love that record. He's guilty of actually going after a person who's blaspheming Jesus right to his face. And he's basically saying... Because it gets so deep with Kanye. Maybe I need to do a whole other video. I am going to do the video of Kanye going on Tucker Carlson. And we'll talk about it. Uh, it is interesting. I mean, the whole thing from the Kanye Bible, the religion, Jesus, him talking about I am a God you know, lighting himself on fire in a church, him like seeming demonically possessed, doing all these stunts, like not dealing with his ego. I don't know, bro. I can do this. And then going on the BET Awards and not just the BET Awards, but I've since come to know that now he has a show called Sunday's Best or something like that. I'm not going to look too much into it because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this has nothing more 
than the world written all over it. I pray for him that he might be bold enough to make a comeback for Jesus Christ. It was Jesus who said, if you do not acknowledge me in front of men, I will not acknowledge you in front of my father. A lot of people try to hide the way that they rebuke people behind closed doors and they just want to show love to people um, on the outside. And, and what can we, you know, what can we do with that? I think when we try to do everything in secret or cover everything up, then we are robbing one another of the testimony. And the testimony is what can really carry you and carry someone else, uh, you know, through life. And if you have made it and persevered and overcome by the blood of the lamb, then you should tell somebody else. That's what this whole, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. You know, the world needs to see what real Christian character looks like. The world needs to see what real Christians look like when they're able to stand up for truth. Here in this nation, we have a bunch of men with zero backbones, a bunch of women that trying to get a man that and they end up having to bend their morals and dress immodestly. As, as you can see, if you were to watch the BET Awards show, you would see everybody singing, I want to love nobody but you. But what are they doing? They have cleavage down to here. They're, they're there to be friends with the world. And the Bible says very clearly in James 4.4, 4, you adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity towards God? Therefore, whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy. I don't see how Tony Evans and Kirk Franklin could say this brother is wrong. They could say they don't agree, but to say he's wrong is, I mean, he's using the scripture. He's using the word, but that's the problem when you've built a platform, right? When you, it's hard to turn away from that. Yahusha was promised and tempted by Satan to bow down to him and he would give him the kingdoms of this world. You know, he was tempted for to get out of alignment and get out of position. But when you know the word, the word brings you into alignment. When you have the spirit dwelling in you, the spirit dwells in you to bring you into alignment. When you cultivate your relationship with the most high, it brings you into alignment and it changes you. It doesn't make you want the things that the world wants. It doesn't make you covet. It doesn't make you caught up in vanity. It changes you. Whatever your proclivity is, it, it, it changes you. You see what I'm saying? The way I used to pray 10 years ago is not the way I pray now. The way I lived my life 10 years ago is not the way. And, and it shouldn't be the same for you either, especially when you know the most high and you're cultivating your relationship with him. You can experience exponential growth in a matter of months. You can experience exponential growth overnight. He can change your taste, your desires overnight. In an instant. That's what happens when you live and exist. Like the scripture says, in him, we live, we move, we breathe, we have our being enemy of God. Listen, I don't want that for Kirk. I don't want Kirk to have an issue going down uh, to, to judgment with God and eventually God saying to him, go for me, I never knew you. David said in the Bible, let a righteous man strike me, it will be a delight to me. Are we supposed to keep it close when people correct us? And like I said, it's not something that Kirk was getting from the secret places in his life, the relationships from his pastors. And that's why I mentioned your pastors are drunk on the wine of Babylon. Because if any pastor that Kirk is following will not call out the fact that he is being friendly with the world by having fellowship with these people, the Bible says, what does light have in common with darkness? Does the devil have anything in common with Jesus? This is the problem that we come up with in our society is that there are a lot of people confused. And the Bible says that even some of the elect will be deceived in this time. And the reason why is because everybody's going to be okay with it. Paul said that the Antichrist would not set up his kingdom until there was a great falling away. What does falling away mean? Is that the sinners? No, it's the falling away of the church. And we are seeing it right now. And so the reason I went out there was not for Kirk Franklin. Some of you will say, do you hate Kirk Franklin? That's why you showed up. No, I don't hate Kirk Franklin. This has nothing to do with Kirk Franklin. This has everything to do with God's sheep 
The Bible says God's sheep know his voice. This has everything to do with warning people out there to stay away from these things. This is what the Bible says will happen in the last days. Many will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. The book of Revelation says specifically, come out of her, my beloved. Do not participate with her in her sins and you won't receive her plagues. You see, Babylon has dealt her wine and that is why we went out that evening to warn people about the calamity that is coming. The Bible says, O oh Babylon, for all of the nations have dr become drunk on the wine of adultery, which means they're playing hooky on God. They, 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 they. And it means that they're serving other gods. And it's crazy. Like the people who say that they are serving God are so blind today. And I would say, you know, speaking generally um, from from like a a place of if we zoom all the way out and get like a panoramic view, there's more Christians that actually turn people off to Yahusha by misrepresenting him than actually have an impact. It'd be better. Right. This idea of saving souls and we got to go evangelize. But then like. You don't treat you don't treat people right at work. You know what I mean? You're not kind. You know what I mean? Like you you do harmful actions to people that are in your local community, like the people that you work with or the people that you live near. Uh each one like you will have more impact there to actually make disciples than you know me being online right now not to say that i can't have an impact but after i go offline i go offline like you don't know how i'm living how much more impact do i have with my coworkers you know where i can ask them things like i asked them a question this week you know if they believe in the in the pre tribulation rapture i can i can discuss things that make my coworkers think and and maybe hopefully go back and pray and seek the most high for for answers you know to these questions that that i would ask them and the questions that i have myself because i'm not necessarily sold on the pre-tribulation rapture i don't think it really makes sense um but even if i'm even if i'm wrong then a hey, i'll be ready the most high said he he wants to come back to find his people working uh so it's interesting you know i just think that you you have to be very careful of of who of what music you listen to, of what preacher you listen to, of the church you go to, because these these places and these people are designed to have a heavy influence on your life. Uh, they're so like, the older I get, the more wiser I get, the more I look into things, the more I find out that everything we're told is basically a lie. Um, the number one songs on the radio, like record labels pay radio stations to play the songs and, and get the airplay. Uh, so a lot of times, like the number one song is not the number one song. it It's the fabricated number one song. You get what I'm saying? Like most things are 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 motivated by money. So when I think about the church, you know, as far as a church building, it's interesting because when I was going there to a physical building, uh, the church facilitated me having a unrighteous relationship with money. You know, the churches that I attended, like, you know, they they tried to oftentimes make it seem like, you know, they weren't straight up prosperity gospel, but they tried to make it seem like, you know, the blessings of the Most High mean that you have a certain amount. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's I can't even like frame it, but y'all know what I'm talking about, especially if you've been to a church or church building. Like the way that they treat money is just unrighteous most often. With Kanye at the same time, they say they with God. When Kanye is a blasphemer, when Kanye is talking about all works of darkness mentioned in Galatians 5, uh, you, you, you guys read your Bibles because Jesus is coming back. And that's the reason why I said to Kirk, 
If you really had a burden for these people, if you really had a burden for the black communities, you would have some gall, you would have some guts to take the one opportunity that you had to rebuke and, and tell them, to tell them the truth, even if it's not a spiritual churchy rebuke, but if it's just a warning to say, guys, Jesus is alive, he is real, he is coming back soon, and all men should repent everywhere. This has nothing to do with what Tony Evans and Kirk Franklin said to me in their meeting. My, my issue is that the Bible says your prophets were false, for they did not warn you of the sin that is going to lead you to calamity. And I believe that if you are a prophetic voice, that you should actually be lifting up a standard. God does call you to do something. The world will hate you. Because Jesus said, yeah. you're, you're, you're not going to be greater than him. Exactly. He said, uh, you know, no, no one's greater than than him and he, he said he said to his brothers when when his brothers were going you know to the to the feast he said they won't hate you they'll hate me because i testify against their evil deeds if you got up at the bet awards kirk and you said guys jesus is coming back the wrath of god is going to fall on all the children of disobedience that, that would shut you down you yeah. would you never have another gig and i and 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 and, and humbly speaking that's what I believe to be different. That that platform was not the platform to to present the gospel in that manner. And we, I, I, I humbly differ with you on that. Basically, every platform is the platform to bring the gospel in a manner that the Most High would lead you. The right time to declare. And make make way for the most high and, and to warn the people is always now. So I disagree with Kirk Franklin and what he just said. Like all the, the time is always now to to warn the people. But the thing is, like you just heard that Kirk Franklin just exposed himself that the brother said, if you gave this type of warning, you would never get a call back. You wouldn't get booked again. And Kirk Franklin was like, Yes, that's why I think it's not. But you're Kirk Franklin. You don't need their platform. And see, that's where the church always gets it twisted or church folks or church buildings always get it twisted because how much money do you need? How many more bookings does Kirk Franklin need? And then this is where the scripture comes in. For what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Whatever the Most High is telling you to do, he will make provision for it. He owns the, the cattle on a thousand hills. He rained down manna from heaven for the children of Israel. He led them a cloud by day and fire by night. If he takes care of the birds every day, how much more will he take care of us? Hmm. All things in the scripture. He said, you have to become all things to all men. And they said that this was an opportunity for them to build bridges and create opportunities. They don't realize that the Bible says no man can come to the Father unless the Holy Spirit draws him. How can you possibly come? See, what churches often don't admit when it comes to this or when they say all things to all men, what they're really trying to do, what most people, what a lot of these men are trying to do is build an empire on the earth. And then, like with the Joel Osteen teaching, you know, I didn't realize, but a another way in which people are blasphemous is so many people, I didn't even notice this until like a few days ago, but a whole bunch of people have blasphemed the Most High by utilizing the phrase, I am that I am. So y'all remember um, I mean, from Eminem, remember Joel Osteen, he came out with a book called The Power of I Am. And it's like, what are y'all doing? So not only, I think that's just like this other idea. When you think about all the prosperity preachers, they, they, these teachings, these lies permeated, you know, talking about how we're little gods. And, you know, really, that was just an excuse for them to fly on there private planes and live these lavish lifestyles with access to excess and you know with their parishioners remaining poor 
and them being able to generate more money and more money and more money because they thinking that, oh, if you give to Creflo Dollar or Benny Hinn or any of these people that you're going to be blessed in return because you're blessing the kingdom of God. So it's always been a hustle for a lot of these men and women. Um, who's up for Carlton Pearson? Basically, I mean, I, what I gathered from what Carlton Pearson was saying is, is that he was faking the whole time. Um, his net that Netflix special that they did about him was very good if you haven't seen it. Um, but it seemed to me that Carlton Pearson, you know, was faking. It was a show. It was all a show. That's what I gather. Come to God unless his spirit draws you. The Bible says, how can anybody know unless there's a preacher, not a singer, not a Diddy Bop song at the BET Awards, but an actual preacher. And Jesus said to all of his disciples, go and preach. So my question for Kirk on the night that we met, as well as my question to you is, why are so many disciples not preaching? Why are so many disciples not doing God's will? This is because people have come to a place in their lives where they just believe what other people tell them. But the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. If you were to just read your Bible, God has published his word and made it available to every single person so that you can know how to respond, how to act, how to make yourself ready. Because the Bible says that when Jesus comes back, he comes back for a pure and a spotless bride. Are you pure? Are you spotless? This is the reason why we go out and preach, and this is the reason why we called out Kirk Franklin. I'm so thankful for comments like this that show that people are waking up because we are sounding the alarm here in the last days. Please know that our heart is for the church. Our heart is for God's elect. To Do y'all think if Kirk Franklin took this moment three years ago do you think he would have, if he took it as a moment of atonement, a moment of repentance, a moment, a moment of reflection, you could see that in Kurt Franklin's face, there wasn't some admission there. But if he took this and maybe fasted over it, prayed over it, if Tony Evans and him, like, you know, prayed together, do you think he would have been on BET most recently saying the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat? I have a mind to believe he wouldn't have, like, if he had taken this moment which I'm, was approximately three years ago. It was uploaded in 2019. Um, I don't think he would have been on BET saying something like that. Giving praise and adoration to rappers with blasphemous lyrics. Hmm. To come together, to abstain from all evil and to become pure as white. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, he said, I charge you to buy from me gold refined in the fire and to put on white clothes to cover your shameful nakedness. What does that mean, putting on white clothes? It means purifying your hearts. The Bible says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The Bible says this kind of persuasion does not come from the one who called you. The devil is trying to persuade you through the music and entertainment you keep watching to have a double mind, a mind that's in the world and considers and values worldly things and a mind that is in the spirit that considers and values the things of God. The and that's why I say you have to be very careful about, you know, if you are attending a church building uh, that that these behaviors are not excused because if they are, you know, actually, you know, so, so that you don't even fall in these traps so that no one deceives you, you need to be cultivating your own relationship with the most high point blank period. You cultivate your relationship with him and then you won't be in a place where you're being deceived. There's plenty of churches over my, you know, I'm 40 years old. There's plenty of churches that uh, I was going to over the years and the most high straight up told me to leave them. And then it was confirmed the reasons why he told me to leave. I later found out that it was always what he told me. So you won't be in a place where you'll be deceived if you're cultivating your relationship with the most high daily, not just on a Sunday 
not just what what the preacher is saying, um, but you actually cultivating your relationship. We live in a time now where most people are walking around with computers in their pockets. Your smartphone is a computer in your pocket. So to be ignorant now is really a choice. You see what I'm saying? Like we have X. I mean, there's so many. You can listen to the Bible. Um, there's the Bible app. There's so many ways that we can get connected. I mean, you can have prayer partners. There's Bible studies. There's so much thing. So many things you can do. And just spend your time cultivating your relationship with the Most High. There's no better way you could spend time doing that daily. The Bible said, let us set our affection on the things above, not on the things below. I hope that you'd be that person today, setting your affection on God so that you can be his delight. Some people said it wasn't loving. I think I've already explained a little bit about what love is, but real love is rebuke. Real love is having the audacity to tell someone the truth, even when the kisses of an enemy are sweet. But I tell you right now, a faithful reprover, a faithful rebuke, faithful are the wounds of a friend, the Bible says. If I was considered Kirk's friend the other night, I would have rebuked him. If I was considered his enemy, I would have kissed him, loved him and said, have a great day, man. Hope everything is great. While I knew in my heart that he was doing things that were against God's word. I hope that you guys know that Jesus is coming back. I hope you guys can fear God and obey his commands because the Bible says that is the whole purpose of man. I hope that you know that my heart was for Kirk and my heart is for the body of Christ. Our heart as a team here at Untamed Truth is to preach the word being instant, in season and out of season. When Kirk walked up, I didn't know that that would happen. I didn't have any idea. I was doing what any preacher of God's word would do is preaching regardless of status preaching regardless of who was in front of me, saying the truth regardless of status, who you were, who you are. I hope that you can now see the <laughs> Now my Wi-Fi is acting up. Come on, Wi-Fi. Hmm. Okay, so I think we got the point there. But that one that makes me, you know, want to go to hold on one second. It makes me want to go to this other person lately. Do y'all know anything about Dante Bo, who basically was released from Maverick City? for some, you know, suspicious, you know, however you want to call it, just for some things that were not in alignment with Maverick City, so they let him go. Now, the interesting piece about this is he's also connected to Kirk Franklin. They're on tour with Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin's like an OG in, in the gospel music. I mean, he's been around for a really long time. I grew up listening to Kirk Franklin. So let's check this one out about Dante Bo. Shout out to Ruslan KD. We're going to use his video. This past year, Dante Bo has been enthralled in a couple of different controversies, and it all culminated to this past week where he posted a video of himself jamming out to Bad Bunny on a party bus. This then spurred multiple discussions on if it is appropriate of someone who is a gospel musician to listen to secular music, be on a party bus, so on and so forth. This then led to some online Christian influencers saying that listening to secular music can open you up to demons, which led to an absolutely dumpster fire of an exchange between me and Marcus Rogers, culminating in a two hour debate that will be posted on the Bless God Studios channel. Moments after our stream with over 5,000 people watching, Maverick City released a statement saying they were putting their professional relationship with Dante Bo on pause. In this video, we'll be looking at the statement from Dante Bo and Maverick City, addressing on if my conversation with Marcus Rogers had anything to do with it and what is probably the reason why he got sat down. Bruce Lawn. 
All right, guys, here's the statement from Maverick City. It says, due to behavior that is inconsistent with our core values and beliefs, we have decided to put a pause on our professional relationship with Dante Bow. Decisions like these are not easy because of the level of nuance, both professionally and personally, but we felt it necessary to address. Maverick City Music is a collective of various artists from many different backgrounds and life experiences as such no one's artist actions or behaviors can always be attributed as a reflection of our core beliefs and values so they kind of said that twice beliefs and values dante is a brother in christ and as much as uh and as much and as such he has our full commitment and unwavering support as he continues to navigate his path forward each of us need needs god's grace and our hope is that we all pray and give them the same opportunity to grow in Christ as we give ourselves. Amen. Now, this is the statement directly from Dante's Instagram. He says, in light of some recent events and opinions, interesting wording, I've talked to some of the wisest leaders and brothers around me. It's awesome he has wise leaders and brothers around him. I'll be taking time off social media to uh, rest mentally and physically. Years ago, when I dreamt of all I would accomplish one day, I didn't account for the pressure and opinions that would come with it. It's important for everyone to know when to step back and refocus. Hope y'all understand and support. I'll hit you guys back when I'm back. I'll hit you up when I'm back. So that's the official statement from both parties. And it's unfortunate this happened. Now, the questions that are coming up and that are going all over Twitter is, yo, this is. So over here in the chat, it says if they. Benji777 says, if they drop him, they definitely got to cut ties with Kurt Franklin. So over here, people are saying, you know, Kurt Franklin has been sketchy lately. Hmm. I knew that these stories were, you know, were, were I also felt like these stories were tied in. And so, you know, if you are just coming into the stream now, uh, basically, Kirk Franklin uh, basically had some blasphemous lyrics, in my opinion. And so we addressed that. And then three years ago, uh, you know, a street preacher was at a location in Florida and Kirk Franklin went out to talk to him, which then resulted in a meeting. So, you know, you could rewind if you want to hear some of that. Um, and now, you know, we're talking about Dante Bo being released from Maverick City, um, you know, for questionable things. So let's continue to listen. Kind of not just scales. There's some affiliation with Kurt Franklin. He's had some questionable things, I guess, with his son. And for them just to discard them, where is the grace? I also find it interesting, too, that it's just Kurt Franklin with questionable issues with his son. But, you know, not about like the way he dances and gyrating everywhere. To me, that's just uncalled for for a father, a husband, you know what I mean? And a man of the most high like that should definitely stop ASAP. That Maverick City sings about. That is one side of the narrative. The other side of the narrative is, hey, he's kind of been out of pocket on quite a few different things with regards to obviously the most recently, the Bad Bunny thing, the Lil Nas X thing. Uh, apparently his overall persona on Instagram, which I'm not really like that, though I've uh, followed Dante on Instagram. I don't really keep up. Um, so this is a culmination of things, how uh, it, it's, it should have happened. He should have been set down Two polar opposite points of views. Now, I think Maverick City was very specific about their language. And I think... Dante was very specific about his language, both parties. And I, this goes back to the broader conversation we've been having, specifically with regards to Christian influencers, Christian artists, Christian musicians, and them sometimes being held to very standards that are similar to that of a pastor or an elder. But there's also the common sense part of, hey, you also do need to live a Christian life. And if you are a Christian musician, there are certain things that are going to come alongside of that. So my question is, was Maverick City out of pocket for this? I don't think so. I think they did what they thought was best and what they thought was wise. The other side of this is, is Maverick City consistent with this position? I've pointed out in my video about this whole Dante Bo thing, some of the other things that they've posted, whether it's the Beyonce mashup, which wasn't like the biggest deal, but was still kind of a bad look with regards to just not knowing your audience, whether it was them posting photos of a girl in a bikini with her boot, buddy, boot, 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 booty cheeks out on the beach singing a Maverick City song and then posting that to their stories that I don't know if this is just one 
element, unless Dante was running their Instagram, which I don't think he was, there's been quite a few little things on their Instagram page that look kind of sus, if we're going to be honest. And so eh, is, is, is that fair to do this, especially considering Dante was, was listening to Bad Bunny on a party bus and he said something weird about Lil Nas X? Or is there something more to the story? Now, before I get there, uh, uh, you guys insta- What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments. Suddenly hit me up and was like, yo, your conversation with Marcus Rogers. I can't believe it. And it was a big conversation. And there's a lot of people watching. But I actually don't think that had much to do with anything. I, I know Maverick City is familiar with Marcus. I don't know if they're familiar with me. I know Chandler is familiar with me. So I actually don't think this has anything to do with the conversations we've had, specifically about can you be uh, demon possessed for just listening to secular music. I, I don't think this had anything to do with it. I think that there was other things that don't need to be public that happen behind the scenes in their interpersonal relationships that are going to remain private that led up to this, that it wasn't just social media, that social media is usually the overflow of other things going on. And I think Dante has been do- dealing with some stuff and he seems to be open about dealing with some stuff behind the scenes that's kind of spurred in some not so wise moments on the scenes. Uh, if you go to Twitter, there's all kinds of wild accusations of what was and wasn't posted and what was and wasn't deleted and who was and wasn't hacked from their Instagram. None of this is verified. We don't know what happened, but There's all kinds of stuff going around, and I honestly don't care to look that deep into photos of such things. I just don't care. So I say all that to say, I think Maverick City seems to have done the right thing in this situation. I'm praying for, you know, the whole uh, Dante's camp. And I did feel uh, a type of spiritual shift that happened with Maverick City, like once they... I'm going to just be straight up once they linked up with Kirk Franklin and once they like, they kind of just blew up. I'm not going to say they came out of nowhere because I was already listening to them. Like their first, you know, couple albums. I love Naomi rain. I think she's very anointed. Um, and even on some of their performance, like I feel like if you saw the BET performance with Maverick city, Naomi rain, like she is a prophetic singer. Um, She really knows how to, uh, you know, bring people to the presence of the Most High. I feel like she's a person who cultivates her relationship with the Most High, which is why she's able to use her gift in that way. Um, But I did notice that there was just like a different feeling that their music had um, once they started to get like mainstream success. Let me know if y'all felt anything or am I just alone in this? Mavericks camp and I would pray and hope that they figure this whole thing out and that Dante would get whatever help he needs and it's gonna be very difficult for him to I guess try and pivot you know or or not work with Maverick City I don't know how this is going to work out but I also think Maverick City needs to take an inventory of what they're posting on their Instagram again not because there's something overtly completely crossing the line but because there are some things that at the very least show a lack of self-awareness on their part and if you're going to seemingly distance yourself from this person uh, are you guys keeping just scales with regards with some of the stuff that's coming out on your Instagram? You know, I don't know, but I think they do need to take some inventory because there's been quite a few things I've personally seen. And I'm not even on Instagram like that stuff, stuff that you guys are sending me. That's just like, wait a minute, this, this is wild. And it's interesting when Christians, especially creative Christians, especially young Christians have such an amazing platform and an amazing opportunity to further the gospel that these sorts of things start rearing their head and character things start getting questioned and maybe sin issues behind the scenes and who knows, but it's unfortunate. And so I'm praying for these whole, this whole. I think the thing is uh, when you get access to, you know, more money or you're around these uh, celebrities, you know, uh Oh, get sleepy. Uh, Remember Dave Chappelle, you know, when he was on Oprah, he talked, or was it one of those other shows? Not Oprah, but maybe the, I forget it. The TV with the older white gentleman, um, where they talk about movies and all this stuff. He, or, or was it Oprah when he talked about Mariah Carey taking her clothes off, running down the street, you know, and, and the level of success, success that 
she has received or reached and then uh, Martin Lawrence, you know, screaming, they're trying to kill me. Um, like how basically he's like, these aren't weak people. So, you know, maybe it's the environment that they're in. So it's the same way for a gospel artist celebrity because they're in the same industry. You know what I mean? They don't necessarily have to be, but they perform at the same award shows. And so I think the higher up you go, too much is given. To whom much is given, much is required. And it's like, you know, there's standards. And, you know, maybe that's for your good and for your benefit that, you know, the more famous you are, the less left and right room that you have. And if you're a worship leader and you're usher, like you have a an important job, you have an important calling. And the scripture uh, says that we are to walk worthy of the calling that was put on us. So. Mm hmm situation man it sucks because i do enjoy maverick city's music i do listen to maverick city's music and i'm curious for those of you guys that decided to cancel maverick city because of dante does this change your perception about maverick city seemingly distancing themselves and putting a pause on their relationship because there's a lot of folks that jump out the window and said nope maverick city's done can't listen to maverick city for a variety of different things everything from liquid death being sold at live nation venues that they were performing at to so on and so forth uh i don't know i don't i don't i don't know i i would i, I do you you guys see them different now is it are they vindicated for distancing themselves um but generally speaking with situations like this it's it sucks man because these are people who i think start out seemingly really trying to do the right thing sing on to the lord make music that glorifies god all of those different things are beautiful are beautiful and so if that's the intent and then along the way you start you know getting into some murky behavior I think that's a that's a tough place. And the question about where is grace and forgiveness, I think is a fair question. I think the better question is where is just scales? The more accurate question is where's grace and forgiveness? Listen, you could have grace and forgiveness without being yoked and partnered with someone that isn't behaving according to their core values and beliefs. I think that's beyond reason with uh, with 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 this situation. If they believe that he is not acting according with their values and beliefs, which I don't think they have a value and belief of don't say anything about Lil Nas X or don't post anything on Instagram listening to Bad Bunny. I don't think that's a core value and belief. I don't think that's what that is, right? Uh, I think there's other stuff and it, it could remain private and that's okay. We don't need to know everything about this situation. Uh, but I think they seemingly made the good call here. I hope that overall that, you know, this this would be a turning point for everybody involved, because I think this is kind of a sad situation, man, that that definitely will confuse Christians. Uh, and yeah, and I think that, you know, what we, what we can get from this is, uh, guess what? Cultivate the relationship with the most high for yourself and don't look to people. And when you find out that somebody's character isn't where it's supposed to be, number one do a check on your own. And then number two, if you feel at that moment that you just stop listening to that music, then stop listening to that music. So let's go over to Marcus Rogers, another Christian YouTuber who's controversial. You know, he has over 641,000. So him and Ruslan got into it over this because of, you know, a Marcus Rogers basically saying something like opening yourself up to demons by listening to secular music. But let's go to Marcus Rogers and let's see what he has to say and we'll have a com conversation about it. What's going on, everyone? So Maverick City Music just released a statement. Due to behavior that is inconsistent with our core values and beliefs, we have decided to put a pause on our professional relationship with Don Bo. Decisions like these are not easy because of the level of nuance, both professionally and personally but we felt it necessary to address. Maverick City Music is a collective of various artists from many different backgrounds and life experiences. As such, no one's artist's actions or behavior can always be attributed as a reflection of our core beliefs and values. Dante is a brother in Christ, and as such, he has our full commitment and unwavering support as he continues to navigate his path forward. Each of us need God's grace, and our hope is that we all pray and give him the same opportunity to grow in Christ as we give ourselves Maverick City music. I want to say this um, 
as kindly as I can. This is not an I told you so moment. Um, if you go back to last year around this time, God had given me warnings. You know, he would wake me up in the middle of the night and give me warnings. Um, the video where I was walking around and, you know, I went outside in the snow covered the ground. And the Lord told me, you know, that he was about to expose what was underneath. If people didn't repent, he showed me there was drinking, there was fornication, there was all kinds of stuff. And many people were upset. Um, and I made maybe three or four uh, videos giving a warning to repent. And then I gave that video that said final warning, you know, like God is about to expose it. Um, it doesn't make me happy. Some things you guys don't know this, what is so crazy about this. And I'm not taking like responsibility. I'm not saying I put Dante on, but before a lot of you knew who he was, you know, he was with Eddie James and he did a song that it, it blessed me. And I remember I'm on Facebook live. I'm just crying. And this is before, you know, he was famous and I shared it. He's like, thank you, bro. Thank you for sharing it. You know, means so much. And um, then, you know, afterwards he blew up. So he definitely has a gift, but God was showing me what he was showing me, you know, about Maverick City for a reason to whom much is given, much is required. And so, you know, Dante. Ultimately, the scripture says no man coming to the father unless the spirit draws him. Right. We don't need to make the most high's name famous. That's that's our privilege. You know what I mean? That's what. But we don't. His name is already famous. His his heart is already going after those who will say yes. Many are many are called. Few are chosen. And so. We can't forget that. The Most High wants to save everybody. So even if somebody is singing his praise and they get exposed for their character, is that not the grace and the mercy of the Most High? Allowing them to be in a situation in which they would be corrected and allowing them to be exposed so they could repent, so they can receive salvation, so they can get back in right standing and right alignment with the Most High? Is it, could that not be seen as that's what's happening? He knows he can, he can hit me up. We can talk. I'm probably not the person that, you know, he would want to talk to, but here's the truth. You know, I would definitely be praying for him. I'd rather see him doing good than doing bad. I'd rather see him being, you know, the man of God that God has called him to be, you know, without compromise, you know, and, just, just, you know, he's so gifted. He's so talented, but something, you know, it was off there. And this is why I tell you guys, you know, you have to have discernment. People would tell me, oh, well, I feel this, or I feel, you know, that you've been, I said, something feels off. Something doesn't feel right. And then God began to give me dreams. He began to give me visions, you know, and I talked to Dante a couple of times. And it just seemed like they were progressing to get more and more worldly. Now, I don't know what the details are. I don't need to. And I, I felt that just from listening to their music. Um, and I think that whatever you're doing, the most high will let you know. Whatever you're doing, the most high will let you know. If you're listening to some music, the most high will let you know what's going on. Because the other piece of that is it's not to condemn somebody or judge somebody, but it's to pray for them, just like Brother Marcus is saying right right now. You no, know, all I know is, you know, let's pray for that brother. Um, you know, some people are probably gonna blame me, you know, try to say that, you know, I was maybe bullying or something today, you know, I was just doing what the Lord told me to do to give the warning. So, you know, it doesn't make me happy to see this kind of stuff happening. I just, I just want us all to, none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. You know, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We all need the grace of God. The Bible says that, you know what, nobody, nobody can say they, they're, they're justified by the whole law. But the thing is, you know, God is expecting us to live holy. They that worship must worship in spirit and truth. The Bible says everything that has breath, praise the Lord, right? But they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. 
And so when God gives you this big platform, you know, if you're if you're living in a way that is not right, he'll give you grace and mercy and he'll cover you. But eventually, you know, if you don't repent or you don't have a heart to repent, you know, what's done in the light, uh, dark will be brought to the light. So, you know, let's be very encouraging in this comment section and let's really, you know, uh, show love and, and, and prayers. And, you know, they might not want to receive it from some of us, but we're going to genuinely pray for, I'm going to pray for him before I go to bed. Uh, I probably will not reach out to him right away because he probably just don't want to, you know, talk to me at all, but let's pray for the man. You know, he's incredibly gifted, incredibly talented, but you know, God just want to do something in him. And I believe that it's going to work out for his good in the end. Love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus' name. I think what, you know, what we're discovering is no matter, you know, what you're doing in the world, you have to investigate your own heart. You have to ask the most high to deal with whatever you got going on and ask him if you are righteous in, you know what I mean? Like, are you doing what he would have you to do? And the reason why I think it's important for us to have a conversation about, you know, Kirk Franklin and him using these words is because if we will give Kirk Franklin the excuse to, to say the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat, and act like Kirk Franklin didn't know what he was talking about, then how will we judge ourselves? You see what I'm saying? If we give and, and see, look, as we as the scripture says, like um, giving grace and mercy does not mean, you know, allowing someone to go without accountability. And you're, you know, he's not, Kirk Franklin's not accountable to us but he's accountable to the most high. But if we will give, if we will grant him forgiveness in a sense of, Oh, just show him love and this and that. No, if he said what was, if he said something wrong, he said something wrong just because we're a fan or appreciate his music or whatever, doesn't lessen the fact that he is wrong. I think that's the most important thing. Cause if we give someone a false grace, like that, then what will we do for ourselves? So 11 months ago, um, Marcus Rogers did a video about Dante Bo and Maverick City posting uh, cussing videos. So I just think, I just think it's time for people to Connect to the most high for yourself and cultivate that relationship with him so you can know that you're in right standing because you can't use anyone else as a barometer of righteousness. You have to follow the most high for yourself and seek his righteousness. That's a scripture verse, ain't it? Matthew 6, 33, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you. That's Matthew 6 and 33. And you will only know that you're doing that if you're cultivating that relationship with the Most High. I think that's about all I have for tonight. And I want to thank everyone for joining. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe. If there's anything you would like to see me do a video about, um, you can reach me at Convo Blueprint with Zion here on YouTube. I'm on Twitch. I'm also on Facebook. So thank you for joining. And um, thank you for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Pray that you be blessed. Shabbat Shalom.